We stayed in analog modeling technique, but we are gonna to a bigger scale. So the, the main aim of the PhD was to contribute to the understanding of strain localization in compressional interplate settings, and in particular in um, continental compressional interplate settings. So the analog models that you will see have been carried on at the tectonic laboratory that we have in Utrecht University. So just a brief introduction to interplate uh, um, deformation. We, we all know that the, the, the main deformation and the high strain range are registered at plate boundaries, but uh, we observe, and we observe here in the Worcester map, that there is strain localization and compressional stress is also inside plates, both oceanic and continental plates. So we, we, the conclusion is that the stresses that are generated at the active plate boundaries are transmitted through the lithosphere and then this interfere with some perturbances that we encounter in, inside the plates, and this causes strain localization. So one of the main um, parameters that has been uh, advocated to, to, to play an important role in strain localization is the lateral variation in strength in the lithosphere. So the, the stress here are transmitted from active plate boundary inside the plates, and the lithosphere reacts mainly uh, um, to, due to its mechanical properties that are driven from the, the vertical rheological layering, but also to the lateral variation. And if we can see in a schematic cross-section, of course, the first contrast we have is between oceanic and continental lithosphere, but we said we concentrate in continental lithosphere. And we can see uh, immediately a huge contrast here between passive margin, for example, extended and so weakened, and the core of the continent is much stronger. So there exists a lot of uh, studies and modeling studies that have been uh, investigating strain localization, and a uh, um, big group of these modeling studies has in common the, the, the setup of having a weak lithosphere in between two stronger plates, and the results of these models were, of course, that strain localized in the weak parts, and the, the stronger boundary plates remains relatively undeformed. And these studies have been applied, for example, to rift inversion, so weakened lithosphere in the rift that has been inverted, and also to uh, strain localization in weak orogenic wedges. Uh, but we know when we observe in nature also settings when there are strong blocks, strong lithospheric blocks in continental lithosphere, and um, uh, we, we strain localizes around these blocks. And here I bring two examples. We have the terrain basin, and the terrain basin uh, is considered strong, and this has been inferred with, with um, low geothermal gradient, and so it's tectonic age. And we see all uh, mountain chains around the basin. And another one is in the North America. We have this, the Appalachians origins, and that has been recognized with seismic and gravity. The presence here in the section of a strong lower crust under plating materials. And we can see the effect of this. So the origin that here is thin skin and wide becomes uh, really narrow and more thick skin just in front of the strong block. So what we did is we designed a series of analog models to contribute and to investigate many parameters that can play a role in stray localization. So quickly, uh, of course, we can have this lateral variation both in uh, a creme brulee type of lithosphere, so really weak lower crust and mantle, and strength mainly residing in the upper crust, or jelly sandwich type of lithosphere. So first series, we have, oops, uh, creme brulee type of lithosphere. We have the upper crust, sand, really strong, and then we have two viscous layer, lower crust, and mantle, really weak. So setup of the model, the, the lithosphere is resting on a high density and low viscosity fluid, so we can uh, guarantee isostasy. And uh, we achieve compression by means of a moving wall driven by an engine towards the model. And the central, in the central block here, narrow block, we implemented a strong zone that here is DZ, we call it disturbance zone. And in this series in particular of models, we investigate, so this, this zone is, is viscous, it has a higher viscosity with respect to the lower crust and the mantle, so it represents a strong block. So, and we investigated in this series the, the vertical 
location of this zone. So in one experiment, we have it in the lower crust, in another one in the little fragmental, and then in both of them. So let's go to the, of course, we do have simplification in analog models. Uh, the, the rheology of the viscous materials. We do not take variation of viscosity with temperature. We didn't include surface processes. And uh, uh, we kept the geometry rather simple. So uh, results with respect to a, a uniform lithosphere with distributed deformation. As soon as we introduce the disturbance zone, we localize deformation at the boundaries. And just let's take home the message from this series that both boundaries are activated despite the vertical location of the strong block. Jelly sandwich type of lithosphere, we do have this time four layers. We introduce a sand layer representing the localizing part of the lithospheric mantle, so strong mantle. And we also change a bit the way we introduce the strong block, so it, we increase in the central part the thickness of the upper crust, and this causes the increase of the strength in this column of lithosphere. Uh, in this setup, we studied first, we kept the strong domain perpendicular to the convergence direction, and we changed convergence velocity and thickness of the localizing mantle, and then we went to oblique strong domains. So first sub-series, convergence velocity in this axis and thickness of the brittle mantle. We can observe that with thin brittle mantle, experiment one and two, the lithosphere responds both with folding, and as soon as we increase the thickness of the localizing mantle, we have actual displacement along folds in the, the brittle mantle. Only, we always got uh, an asymmetric structure, so under thrusting continental subduction geometry, except in this case, with low convergence velocity and thin brittle mantle where we got a really symmetric mountain route. In all cases, again, deformation localizes at the boundary, but with respect to the previous series, this time only one boundary of the strong block is activated, and it's actually the boundary facing the moving wall. If we go to oblique, so we keep the, the, the strong lithosphere, strong block, and we go to oblique strong domains, because of course in nature, we never have the perfect situation of 90 degrees with respect to converse direction. First, 80 degrees. One boundary is activated, but this time it's the other boundary. It's the boundary facing the back wall. 75 degrees, part of the, the, the right boundary is activated here, and part of the left boundary is activated here. When we decrease the obliquity with respect to the converse velocity, what happens is that only small segments of this boundary is activated because we are too far away from the moving wall. So main results of this series, um, when, when a small boundary is activated, still we have a perturbation, so we have a curvature of the origin. But most important, we notice that, of course, we have asymmetric convergence, but if when we activate the boundary uh, on the, the back wall of the box, we have under thrusting dipping towards the moving wall. When we do activate the margin facing the moving wall, we have under thrusting dipping towards the back wall. So we have, and in one of the models, we have the coexistence of the two uh, deep direction of the under thrusting plane. And this was for comparison on the 90 degrees where it always dipping towards the back wall. So in conclusion, uh, when we have lateral variation of strength in the lithosphere, and especially strong blocks embedded in weaker lithosphere, we always obtain strain localization the facts of having a, a creme brulee jelly sandwich type of lithosphere drive uh, and, and uh, governs if one margin or two margins of the block are activated and where deformation is localized. In the case of a three layers lithosphere, we were able to distinguish between different mechanisms of deformation according to the uh, location at depth of, of the strong block. We always have high relief buildup associated with strength localization in compressional settings. And as we, we, according to the obliquity, we can activate um, the whole margin of the block with just small portion and also um, leading to a curvature of the origin. And um, in, the, in the last series of experiments, we noticed that the interplay of strain localization in the mantle, so creation of an under thrusting plane and the activation of one of the other boundary of the strong blade, uh, block drive the, the deep direction of the continental subduction. 
that's it. Thank you.